get my six. What's up, everybody? Good evening. It's chilly where I am. It's 30-something degrees. I hope you're warm where you are. Um, I just woke up from a nap. That's why I seem a little groggy. I've had some coffee. But this is what I hate most about this time of year. I mean, I don't mind the cold weather so much, but I hate the fact that it gets dark at 5 o'clock. <clears throat> Wake up from a nap, energized, ready to go, you know, for round two of the day. And then I've got limited daylight left, whatever. Uh, but when I awakened from a deep sleep, I found that they had me surrounded. What the heck's that all about? Well, check it out. I got some video footage of it. Here's uh, the view I woke up to from my nap here just a little bit ago. It's our dining room. Table's messy. Excuse the mess. Let's see. One, <clears throat> two, three, four. Oh, that one just kicked the other one. That wasn't nice. Oh, and there's one way out there. It's a five. Look at that. Six, seven. Hi, dear. I just happened to walk into the kitchen and look out the window and they're here too. It's one, two, it's three. So there's like 10 deer that I can see right outside my windows. I so much more prefer looking out and seeing deer rather than people. Isn't that neat? I came up here to tell this story because I do have a story. Uh, and they ran away, but now they're coming back in. So watch back here to see if you see any four-legged critters, but also keep your eyes open for large upright walking bipedal two-legged creatures this is a very ridge line about this same time last year it might have been a little bit later where we caught a couple things up there of curiosity so <clears throat> i uh ran into one of my buddies just yesterday um i forgot he's watching i'm not gonna say his name we'll call him billy uh him and another guy thanksgiving told me i needed to watch a movie called the big lebowski and here's why I'm bringing this up, because I want to give a shout out and kudos to John Goodman, who's in that movie. Remember John Goodman? He was on the Roseanne Barr show, played the husband. Have you guys seen him? If you haven't, just Google him. He's lost like 150 or 200 pounds. He looks thin. Uh, so he made a big change in his life, something that's going to pro probably allow him to live another decade if he's able to keep the weight off. So good for you, John Goodman. But uh, those guys, they kept saying I needed to watch it movie the big lebowski and i'm like why what's it about and they're like it's about you and they laugh i watched it and i'm like dude i mean you know what i'm just trying to say right i mean dude didn't get it at all i mean you know what i mean right okay so anyway they told me to watch something else last year, and I did, and I totally didn't get it. <sighs> Dude. I'm hearing footsteps, and I'm not so sure it's the deer. All right. Billy, we're calling him. Talking to him yesterday, and he uh, watches the channel, and he saw the video I made a few days ago where I talked about buying an old book that had some pictures in it that had a creepy forearm, looked like a, a creature's forearm, one drawing, and the thing actually crawled off the page. He said, you know, I'd forgotten all about it until I heard you telling that story, but that reminds me of a time, uh, Billy, reminds Billy of a time, where he had something very similar happen, but kind of opposite. 
it was an engraving uh, where something crawled onto the page. This is spooky. I mean, I was in town when he told me, broad daylight, we're in a public place, people everywhere, properly socially distancing, um, and I still felt chills. So when he was in college, and we're about the same age, late 40s, uh, he worked, he told me he worked in a framing shop, like where people would take their pictures that they wanted to have framed. Uh, he dealt with lots of different types of art as far as prints, paintings, engravings, etchings. And he said one day he got a package in the mail when he was working at this shop. So about 10 a foot by foot, properly padded and everything. He opens it up and there's an etching inside. I guess the best way to describe, or no, it's an engraving. That's what it is. A lot of people confuse the two, an etching and an engraving. Um, etchings are done you know, with um, charcoal, pencil, pen, whatnot. In, uh, engraving is actually created by way of uh, a plate. You actually create a plate, like you would maybe a wooden plate or a metal plate, and you would use razor blades and knives to carve. It's really, it's a really neat technique. You're not necessarily carving the image you're trying to create. You're carving away all the dead space and leaving the image you're trying to create. And then, of course, you would dip that in some sort of medium like ink or whatever, press it down onto the paper, pull it back off, and then there you have your image created from that plate. And then you could quickly reproduce that image. And this is how it was done back in the old days. And this is how they used to print newspapers, something very similar to this. So he opened up the package and there was an uh, engraving in there about 10 inches by 10 inches. In, in, engravings are unique that they're they're only made up of two colors too. You've got the white space and then you've got the black from where the ink was. There's no gray. And that's one of the best ways Billy was telling me. I, I learned more about art listening to this story than I ever cared to know. I mean, I, I know what bent metal looks like. Uh, so anyway, um, 10 by 10 engraving and it appeared to, to be a house like a big uh, antebellum era mansion somewhere in the south that you know you could probably drive just where we live here in virginia drive in any direction go 10 miles and you'll pass dozens of these places a lot of these big old houses around here uh, built in the 1800s big brick mansions so it was one of those it had a, a big vast lawn in front of it and some trees coming around the side and that was it. He looks at it and he says, oh, it looks, looks nice. Nothing special about it. And there was a note inside and it said uh, something to the effect of, I, this, this is a very special uh, engraving. My grandfather created this. Uh, I want the best frame you have available. Price is no concern of mine. So, you know, and he said, uh, Please don't ship. I can either come into town and get it or, you know, you can bring it out to me. And he said that he would pay extra to have have it delivered to him. So Billy looked at it and thought, well, okay, I'll get around to this at some point. So he puts it off to the side. He goes back to, you know, his pile of work that he was working on framing. First come, first serve, that sort of thing. Well, Around mid to late afternoon, he'd gone to lunch, come back. One of his coworkers comes over and he picks up this engraving. He's looking at it and he says, this is kind of creepy. When, when did this come in? And Billy said, well, it came in today. He says, I don't know what's so creepy about it. It just looks like one of these big old, you know, centuries old brick mansions. It's all over this part of Virginia and a lot of the South. And his coworker says, yeah, but don't you think that this... Uh, this thing or this guy or whatever is pretty creepy. And Billy says, what thing, what guy? It's just a house. So the guy walks the engraving over to Billy and shows him. And Billy looks at it. And they're just coming out of, it seemed as if it had walked onto the frame and it was coming out of those tree lines. One of the tree lines was a figure. It was uh, an upright walking figure 
could have been a person, could have been a man, but it was kind of walking sideways, going towards the house at an angle, and there was uh, some white on its back. And of course, again, with engravings, it's either black or white. So Billy looks at it and he thinks, well, gosh, I must have missed that one because I could have sworn that that wasn't there. Uh, but, you know, he had been busy. He was opening mail, doing all kinds of other work. So it just slipped his mind. So he puts it back down. He goes back to work. Uh, worked the rest of the day. Went home. Uh, the next day he had to go to his classes and whatnot because he was a college student. And then after his last class, he went back to work. He worked about 20 hours a week. It wasn't a full-time thing. So he gets back to work. And there's a couple other co-workers there. This place, I guess, utilized college students for, for labor, like a lot of college towns do, businesses in a lot of college towns. So he gets there, and there are two co-workers, not the guy from the day before, but two others, just staring at this engraving, which was laying on the tables face up. And uh, he walks in, he goes, that's kind of a unique piece, isn't it? And one of the two said, well, yeah, it is, but what in the heck is that creepy thing? I'd call it a creepy crawly. You know, maybe some of the things that we've had show up on cameras around here. So he goes over and he looks at the engraving, and sure enough, this figure that he had seen the day before with the other guy, uh, that he hadn't seen before the other guy pointed it out to him, was now in the center of the lawn, almost to the house, crawling on its hands and knees. He still couldn't see any sort of face. It looked like it was wearing like a, maybe a, like a black cloak of some sort. But that white thing he had noticed the day before it was a cross on the thing's back. <clears throat> I'm getting chills just retelling this story. It's so creepy. Could you imagine this? He gets it in the mail, uh, opens it up. It's a house in a big field with some trees. And then this thing creeps onto the scene. It's easy enough to say, oh, I missed that, obviously. But then, now the thing's crawling to the house. So he, he tells him, he goes, guys, I, I, I know this might sound crazy, but when this came in yesterday, and he, he ran them through, you know, the story you've heard so far, and they didn't believe him. And so they said, you wait till so-and-so comes in and uh, ask him. And, and he'll attest for me that this thing wasn't crawling yesterday. It was creeping in to, to, the, to the image through this tree line over here. Well, that guy never came into work that day. But the next day, all of them were back there at work. And when Billy goes into work after having finished his classes for the day, all three of his coworkers who had seen different images of the image were standing there looking down at the table at the image, at the engraving. So Billy walks over and he looks down and the, all right, keep watching back there. I'm clearly hearing footsteps, but there are no deer. So, uh, he looks down at the image. The, the creepy crawler is gone. Nowhere in sight, but there was a slight change to the engraving this time. The brick mansion was three levels high and it had five windows on each level, except on the bottom level because where the middle window would have been, there was the door, the front door of the house. But the window beside that was open. And again, he thought, well, maybe this was open when I originally saw the, the engraving and maybe it just slipped my mind because it is a small, minute detail. But then again, maybe not. So the one guy who had seen the image of the creepy crawly thing coming out of the side of, of the engraving attested to that. The other two, of course, attested to having seen it the day before uh, crawling across the lawn toward the house with the with the uh, white cross on its back, black cape of sorts. And the setting in the engraving also happened to be night. You could see the moon. So whatever this thing was going on with this engraving, uh, it was nighttime. So the following day, because this is how stories go and jokes, you always got to have, you know, sets of three. Why? Because the old wives' tales, wives' tale, things happen in threes or something comes in threes. 
might not just be good luck or bad luck, but it's also jokes and stories. So on the third day, Billy comes into work and he finds his coworker staring at the image again. This time, the thing is back in the picture. The window has been shut. It's walking across the lawn back toward the tree line and it has something in its arms. Now it's heads down, so they still can't make out any sort of facial features on what this thing is. And it was skeleton thin almost. The legs, they were covered, but he had, she, it, whatever, had one leg outstretched as if taking it. Okay, I was saying one leg outstretched as if taking a long, fluid stride, almost as if running. And there's some really weird stuff going on here. I don't know if you caught it or not, but my camera just went out again. Without me stopping it. Clearly hearing footsteps, but I'm not seeing anything. And did you hear like that boom? Like a guttural growl? All right, so anyway. <clears throat> On the third day, they come in, they see this. The thing, it looks like it's running away from the house. The window had been shut and it was carrying something in its arms. And they all looked and it appeared to be a baby. So anyway, uh, they were so creeped out by seeing this that they decided they were gonna put this thing at the top of the to-do list, get it framed, get it out of there. And that's exactly what they did. They all worked on it together. They called the owner, he'd left his number with the note, and, they, and uh, Billy said, I don't mind bringing it out to you. Uh, and he did, he, he, he lived not far from here, the, the guy who owned this. Uh, it wasn't in this county, but it was less than an hour away. So Billy ended up taking this thing out to the guy who was living in the house that the engraving depicted. And he spoke to him for a little while, just, just politely. He didn't overstay his welcome. But he said, you know, that's a it's, a, it's a very curious piece. I would like to know the origin of this piece. And the guy looks at him immediately and he says, did you guys see anything odd? What did you witness? It's like he knew the guy knew. And the guy's, and so Billy tells the guy, he says, well, we thought we might've seen some things change, but we're not sure, excuse me. So um, the guy told him, he says, I know the history of this piece and he claims he had seen odd things too and one of the reasons he wanted to have it framed is so that if there were anything in the image that could come off the page like the arm in the story i told last week he wanted to make sure the thing stayed secured inside a frame of course it sounds to me like and after you hear the tale of this uh i don't think you could keep whatever is in that engraving inside a frame or contain it in any other way the story was that that man, who was, Billy said was old at the time, he probably would have been a World War II generation of that era. He's probably not with us anymore. The engraving had actually been created by his great, great grandfather, uh, who lived in that house. The house had been in the family for, for centuries, not uncommon around here. Um, they were having, an issue with uh, thieves. Some of the folks who lived in, in, the, in the great, great, great grandfather's era, whatever it was, who were not so well off, uh, were often caught stealing. And when they were caught, uh, like livestock, which of course was a person's livelihood back then, everybody grew and raised their own food. Well, there were some folks who just didn't want to do the work associated with that, so they went out and took others. Uh, similar to today, well, whatever, I won't talk about taxes at this time. But uh, at any any rate, uh, they had just about dealt with all the thieves. Backwoods justice uh, is what I'm saying here, as far as uh, probably a rope was involved in a tree. And they caught their last thief, and this was his unfortunate demise. They hanged him, and... It turns out that this thief, and, and by the way, it wasn't an enslaved person, and this was during the times of slavery. Uh, they were not enslaved people. It was uh, a local uh, ruffian. And it turns out that this final thief, he felt that 
he was entitled to take what he wanted off of that estate because supposedly it had been in his family uh, for the longest time and it had switched hands into the other family by way of marriage. So I guess it had been in this guy's family because of uh, on his mother's or, or some sort of female lineage, which once they married a man, kind of the owner, owner, the lineage in which the property was passed down then changed. This guy felt as if, uh, you know, he had been, had, had you know, his legacy robbed from him. He, they, they took care of him. They took him off the street. Uh, but as he was about to die, he said, I will take the lineage from you as well. It's something to that effect. I will destroy your lineage. I will make sure things don't continue for you. Well, they only had one child, this great, 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 great grandfather of the man that owned the engraving now that was having it framed. They had one child. It was a boy. It was a baby boy. And within days of them hanging that thief, the baby went missing. The baby went missing. Uh, it was never found. The man of the house was an engraver. It was something he did as a hobby, not really as a livelihood. He made that engraving of the house and family story, legend, folklore was that the engraving itself drove him insane. He would rant and rave about seeing, you know, this thing come and sneak into the house under the, the light of the moon and take the baby and run off with it. Uh, they were going to commit him but he ended up making the choice to take his own life before that happened so that was the story of the engraving the engraving that had i guess a creepy crawly slip onto and back off of the scene so if that's not a creepy story i don't know what is uh i tell you when it comes to art i think i'm just going to stick to my bent pieces of metal and leave all the prints out of it see y'all for more next time sneak up on this thing they always come out when they think i'm done making the video i'm recording again as you can see
Is that one in a tree? They didn't run away, but they're hiding. We can't see them, or can we? Clearly heard them, and it was not deer. Deer would have ran, and we would have seen their white tails. Now, see you for more next time.